Good morning and welcome to another episode of Josh and Pat. I'm Joshua Klein, joined by Patrick Cassett. And last night's preseason game marked the end of a career. Marcus Mariota, who came to the league with sky-high expectations, has officially been declared a has-been. Now, we all saw on the quarterback show on Netflix the decline of Marcus Mariota as he got his last chance to start in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons. But now he had a chance to solidify himself as a backup, and maybe if the time was right, say, God forbid, Jalen Hurts gets hurt, he could come in and maybe the offense wouldn't drop off too much because he is a a mobile quarterback, some would say. But last night, he said, hey, I'm finished with this league, and this league Mm -hmm. is finished with me. He came out, he did not look good, he threw an interception, and now... Marcus Mariota went from a number one string quarterback in the NFL to a third string in a matter of months. Patrick, talk about this. Yeah, it's tough, Josh, here because, look, I mean, he goes nine for 17, quarterback rating below 43, which is bad. And and you really can't spin it any other way. You got to feel bad for Marcus Mariota here, though, right? Because he goes to Oregon and you got to think that if he's just born 10 years later, he gets that big 10 competition now, and that's going to elevate his game. But instead he was stuck in the pac 12. So it's an unfortunate situation for him. Where does Marcus Mariota turn from here? Well, I think he's got two options. He goes and he just quits Mm -hmm. or, or the second option is he quits and, and, and tries to get like a college football analyst job. Yeah, those are definitely good options. The only thing is he's so, He's playing so bad right now, and this is, again, Marcus, no disrespect. You're playing not great right now. So it's no, probably no going to be hard for me to listen to you give you know, a, a breakdown of everything. It's like right, Johnny, but not, not, not on an NFL show, Josh, on, on a college show. Maybe. Maybe you're right. Um, and, and this is a similar conversation people are having with Baker Mayfield right now. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like he could be a great TV analyst, but he can't suck. And for the next couple of years, he has to. Hey, but Baker's going to be that starting quarterback, though. But then again, Dan Orvlovsky, 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 hit Dan, Dan. Orvlovsky, Orvlovsky. Yeah. That's a tough last name, Dan. You might want to change that. Uh, Dan Orvlovsky, Orvlovsky. <laughs> he he's doing it, and we saw what he did in the NFL. <laughs> so you know, it's uh, it's it's possible, maybe. But yeah, it's a it's a tough tough time for Marcus Mariota, but. <laughs> But on the flip side of the ball, man, uh, his his quarterback competition was was balling. You know, we have uh, we have uh, Darian Thompson Robinson, thirteen for twenty five, one hundred sixty four yards. Does have that illegal block, uh, block. So so that that's yeah. But tough. you're trying, Josh. You're trying to earn that spot in the preseason here. You're trying to earn, earn that spot on the roster, and you want the guys to be like, you know what? He's one of us. He's a guy that I want to go through battle with. And we all know that quarterbacks with three names, you know, two last names, they're good in the NFL. And you got to have this guy on your roster. Yeah, I mean, he does have a tough, tough uh, competition for for that second string spot. I mean, Josh Dobbs is, I mean, he's a legend in this league. So it's going to be tough to see what if he can do something there. But, I mean, shout out him showing up. Another notable player last night, Austin Watkins Jr. I guess he's very good at football. That's what we learned. Now, it's always tough to judge people 100% with the preseason game because we know that, you know, you're playing against backups, third strings, fourth strings, people who are never going to see the NFL again. Uh, so it is tough to judge. We have to assume, though, this is going to translate into the regular game. Excited for the Browns mm-hmm. on that because, I mean, they've lost a lot of weapons at wide receivers in the past several years. Um, mm-hmm. So it's good to see that they are potentially – getting some new guys and that can play. Well, you know, and it's also, you got to assume this, Josh, you got to assume that the results that we see in preseason are what we're going to see during the regular season. So after last night, I learned because it was a tie game, 18 to 18, I learned that the Cleveland Browns are just as good as the defending NFC champion, Philadelphia Eagles. You're right. Because it was a tie game, 18, 18, the Cleveland Browns, are as good as the defending NFC champions, mm-hmm. the Philadelphia Eagles. 
You're right. right. I mean, that, that makes sense to me, Patrick. So, mm-hmm. um, well, that's good for them. That means that either the Browns really built up the roster here, which it looks like they did, mm-hmm. or or the Eagles have fallen off. So we don't know yet. Um, but that's that's cool for them. It was a good good preseason game. Good to have football back on the the TV. A uh, lot big news coming out of the NFL right now. Uh, Sam Howell has officially been named the starting quarterback for the Washington Commanders. Now, the Commanders' name, I guess, should be more like the Washington like TBD. Mm-hmm. But to be decided, this is a very much a move of hey, we want Caleb Williams to be our quarterback more right. than we don't want Sam Howell to be our quarterback. Right. I, it, look, the commanders are all in on Caleb Williams now. They're setting up their stock to try to get that number one pick or at least be in position to be that yep. number one pick. They're all in. They love USC yep. you guys. That, and 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 the commanders look look now because the commanders have made the move. This is a long term franchise decision. When you get the new ownership come in, yeah, they want Caleb Williams, and that's the decision that Ron Rivera makes. Yeah, I mean, and and Ron Rivera, it, this is an interesting move for him because it feels like he is on a short leash right now. New ownership comes in, he hasn't really done anything Mm-mm. except for almost beat Tom Brady with with Taylor Heineke. A couple years that, ago. That's more on Taylor Heineke than, than that's Ron more Rivera. On, yeah, people are giving that to Taylor Heineke. So, um, it's I feel like he's on thin ice as far as his coaching security and job security. So, interesting move to say, hey, we're going to tank for Caleb Williams here. But but maybe he believes, or like honestly, that he could win with Sam Howell. And maybe they can. I'm not saying they can't. Then again, it just feels like this is a pro Caleb Williams move. Um, what I think would be a good idea, Patrick, though, and this is something that um, you know you can give me your thoughts on. Yeah, tell I me about it. I think the best idea that the, the commanders can do to do a full 180 degree turn of their franchise is this: they play this year as the Washington Commanders. Mm-hmm. They suck. Then they get the number one draft pick, and they go out there, and as they announce. Caleb Williams as the number one pick, they announce who he's going to be playing for and their new name change. Now, yeah, I think I, this would be electric. Now, some people are saying the new name is just going to be the old name. I'm not saying that. We're not saying that. That's what the petitions are saying. But that would be electric. Yeah, I mean, imagine it's like, look, it's it's the Washington Hogs. It's the Washington uh, Red Tails. It's it, whatever it is. You announce yeah. the new name right when Caleb Williams comes out on stage. But look, yeah, they, they'll be like, they'll be like the Washington select Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. And then he comes out with the new logo on the hat. Oh, yeah, that would be so electric. Uh-huh. I mean, that, and people probably, would be like, whoa, 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 what is this? People will lose but, their minds. Look, this is what I do know, Josh. I do know this. A guy like Riverboat Ron. You don't get a nickname like Riverboat Ron unless you are going to go all in on winning. So he believes Sam Howe's the guy. We believe Sam Howe's the the guide, Caleb Williams. Yeah, Sam Howe. It, Ron Rivera believes that Sam Howe is the guy, but we believe Sam Howe is the guide to Caleb Williams. The guy, that's, mm-hmm. a great, hey, that's a great great take. Um, Thank you. Very cool. Moving on. This is, a, this is kind of... I mean, this is a Madden's. They were getting in the dumpster fire. Madden was at an all-time right. low, and then all of a sudden, in the last two days, people are like, "Well, actually, the gameplay in Madden's pretty good." And then Tyreek comes out and basically says, "Hey, the people who are scouting these Madden players are basically NFL scouts." Tyreek Hill uses Madden to scout mm-hmm. opposing DBs, so he basically said, "They get it right." Well, and you, and you got to remember, Josh, they got talent evaluators on the sideline. They have, you know, a legend, a future Hall of Famer because he crowned it himself. He's still awaiting that invitation to the Hall of Fame, but it's Chad Ochocinco. Mm-hmm. He's one of the talent evaluators yeah. for Matt. So you you put minds like that into the same room. Tyreek, he feels comfortable just, just getting the game plan ready the night before on Matt. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's so cool to see because, I mean – it makes me feel like when I'm, you know, when I'm playing Madden, that one, this is as realistic as it could be, and that, and that's what I, I like to know that. 
Um, mm-hmm. But it, again, it is a massive shout out to Madden saying like that's like he's basically attributing a lot of his success to Madden. Huge and program. And that's again, this is a 180 degree turn of the narrative of Madden and what's Madden's been in the last several years. And, now, and, Josh, and I, think about this. Think about how these people have been saying these Madden games have been horrendously bad this past few years. Mm-hmm. And Tyreek's still balling. If they get Madden right this year, are we going to expect Tyreek Hill to go off in a way that we've never seen it before? Well, Maybe? you're also talking about you're talking about it, it, an avenue for amateur players to get to the NFL. Because if you can see clearly, Tyreek Hill is only good because of Madden, right? I mean, it yeah. could be because he's a world class athlete. So, I mean, this is going to give a lot of people hopes and dreams. But Josh, I I do want to say this. Maybe not a great look for Tyree Kill here, and 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 let me begin. This is coming off the heels of the Johnny Manziel documentary. Where he said he watched zero film, zero, and and Ty- Tyree Kill just just said he watched zero film. So no, but he watched um, a simulated film, and that's, it was simulated, right? You, well, it's, you, that's it's what you basically think. the same thing as the regular film. It's just a simulated film. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah, like when a NASCAR you know, driver hops in the sim. It's like, you know, that's he's doing his due, due diligence. My question is, what happens when one day the evaluators accidentally, you know, they get the corners right, but they don't get Tyreek right. And maybe they give him a little bit more speed than he's used to. And he's like, oh, shoot, like I can burn this guy. And then Sunday comes and he cannot. And then well, all of a sudden, you know, a lot of plays that he's like, he's, you know, he he's telling old. Uh, McDaniel's. He's saying, "Hey, dude, like, dude, we c- this is the place we got to run because mm-hmm. I can torch this guy." And then all of a sudden, he lines up. McDaniel's is calling the plays. Tyreek can't execute because in Tyreek's brain, he's not quite sure. Or, or maybe the one time that the 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 Madden evaluators maybe they underestimate a, a mm-hmm. DB. Maybe they say, "Hey, this guy's not that good," and it's because they don't know. Maybe he's a rookie. We, right. we, we haven't seen him in the NFL yet, so we'll see. But I guess it hasn't burned him yet. Well, and Josh, could you imagine the scandal? I mean, we have talked about the sod father from last year's Super Bowl with the grass, people slipping and sliding, how he was mm-hmm. a Chiefs fan. Well, imagine Madden Gate. If you get a Madden developer that really wants to see the Dolphins go down and he starts tweaking with the formulas on the cornerbacks, I'm not saying it could happen. Oh, man, I didn't even think about that, yo. I mean, this is Tyree Kill is going to be looked at through a microscope week to week. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and I think this narrative is going to follow him, whether he likes it or not. So, Tyree, be prepared. Um, we, we're very excited to see how this plays out. So, OK, moving on, we got uh, Joe Burrow is going to be on season two of the mm-hmm. Netflix quarterback show. We, we think that's ex- very exciting news. Now, uh, we do know. Based off last show, if you're on the show, there's a 33% chance that you will win the Super Bowl. Um, but and, and Josh, not enough people are talking about. There's also a 33% chance that you're out of the league in probably a year because we're looking at Marcus Mariota as well. And so you 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 start drawing straws for Joe Burrow, and it's like, which avenue are we going to take? Super Bowl Avenue or like potential like career ender? We yeah, exactly. We don't we're not really sure. Um, but I mean, there's also the Kirk Cousins Avenue where you kind of just like you stay and you're, you're pretty you're solid relevant for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but we also know that in like the last, like de- several decades, a quarterback who lost their first Super Bowl appearance has never made it back. And mm-hmm. we know that more. that is haunting Joe Burrow. You see it in the comment sections all the time on anything about Joe Burrow going to the Super Bowl, Right. So that's kind of like an immovable mm-hmm. object, but but this thirty three percent might make Joe Burrow an unstoppable force. So we well, don't really know what's going to happen, uh, but we are excited to see how he operates. If I had to guess, he's you know, he, I mean, he's just he seems like a very quiet guy. I'm not right. sure and, how much they're going to get. And Josh, there's one thing I asked for: if you're going to have Joe Burrow on the show, quarterback. I just want to make sure that Netflix is covering Joe Burrow when he went to the white party with Michael Rubin, because we know Michael Rubin sat down with the rookie quarterbacks yep. with Tom Brady. He had that conversation. So you can only imagine the insight that he's going to give to Joe Burrow when he's at his own party. 
So I just mm-hmm. want to make sure that, you know, Netflix got that on camera, that we'll be able to see that. Because I think that'll be huge to have Michael Rubin's advice on how to play quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. That, that'll be a huge part. And, you know, if they didn't get it, I'm sure Michael Rubin would be happy to mm-hmm. to to arrange that sit down again so he can so he can let him know. Um, and maybe with a new crop of quarterbacks, maybe it's like a series he does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's exciting for for everybody. Do we know who the other two quarterbacks are yet, or no? And, and we're not we're not aware with that. But you know, I imagine there's a guy like Michael Rubin. He's working behind the scenes to really try to make that show the best. Um, mm-hmm. so. Wait, so so if we go, okay, so there's obviously three tiers of quarterbacks mm-hmm. there. Um, so we got if we, Joe Burrow, let's just say he's the Patrick Mahomes tier. Mm-hmm. We need like a middle of the road guy, Patrick. Who are we thinking for this role? I mean, they tried to go to Dak Prescott, but he he declined, and is and that's that, a tough is situation that, to be is in. Dak Prescott, the middle of the road guy. Well, he might be a little worse, Josh. Let's because yeah, Dak Prescott have a ch- might be that guy out the league in a year. Because if I know anything, people are talking about Dak Prescott breaking the the interception record this year. So I'm not. Yeah, it's, it's I'm gonna, not saying that he's going to do that, but I'm just saying Dak Prescott is on thin ice right now. It's a conversation that can be had. And and if I if I have a reminder to myself, Dak Prescott told us he isn't going to throw double digit interceptions. Reports I'm hearing out of training camp, Josh. I'm hearing this guy's tossing interceptions left and right. And I so, know they just gave ninety seven million dollars to Trayvon Diggs, so maybe it's just a Trayvon Diggs situation on defense for Dak uh-huh, Prescott. Fair, fair, but Dak Prescott may have a chance to go do a very rare eat. It happened. But none other than first overall pick, Jameis Winston, a few years back. A chance to go 30 30, 30 interceptions, 30 touchdowns. I think Dak Prescott, we can't rule it off the table. No, no, we can't. And you know that offense is going to be explosive, but you're right. Mm-hmm. They're going to potentially turn the ball over a lot. And hey, maybe they can afford to do that because the Cowboys defense is great. Micah Parsons, great. Trayvon Diggs, mm-hmm. great. So you got a great defense. So maybe, maybe the Jameis Winston formula. Could work with the Cowboys if they, as long as they're scoring touchdowns, maybe they can afford to also turn off, turn over the ball half the time. So, yep, we'll see. I think it's possible. It's a conversation to be had. I think it's possible as long as the defense shows up. Now the defense is probably not going to be super thrilled, but then again, if they're if they score enough touchdowns, maybe they'll be all right. Um, mm-hmm. Patrick, this is a this is exciting news. Uh, I mean, we're already talking about the Super Bowl. It's the Super mm-hmm. Bowl halftime Soft. performance. Now, I have heard that Lizzo was, you know, I think she was in the conversation. She's no mm-hmm. longer in the conversation. Yeah. Who is in the conversation for the halftime performance show right now is Bad Bunny, Jack Harlow, Harry Styles, and Miley Cyrus. Now, Bad Bunny dating one of the Jenners, right? Yes, Kendall. Kendall, got it. Um, Dak Prescott, I think he's. I don't think he's dating anybody. But this is this is a, a good lineup. Personally, I could go without Bad Bunny or Jack Harlow. But if you gave me Harry Styles, Miley Cyrus, I think it'd be great. Leaning towards, I feel like Miley Cyrus. She deserves it more. She's kind of been in that like the spotlight longer. We all kind of grew up with her. Like Harry Styles. Harry Styles will get it. I think should get it eventually. But I think I, if we're talking about who's due. It's Miley Cyrus, and he, and here's the thing, Josh. Is, is you gotta if if you throw in someone like Harry Styles, you're talking about an absolute mega star, a, a person that has millions of fans travel around the world for him. So we talk about the Super Bowl and the viewership primarily male. If you bring in Harry Styles, the NFL has a chance to break viewership records because not only is the game played on the field the Super Bowl but this is a Super Bowl for every fan of music imagine all of the sorority girls around the globe tuning in for that halftime performance Josh we're talking about breaking viewership numbers that that would be true and then maybe they pull up do they pull up the surprise like One Direction reu like reunite at the halftime show, I'm not sure. Like for like one song. I mean, Josh, that might be too big. That's too big, too big to big. even yeah, comprehend. That, you're right. That's that we're too big there. Uh, mm-hmm. But the question is, like, I don't think Harry Styles has enough time in the 
in the halftime show to like you know to to take the mic and walk around and read the signs and have people throw things to him and say oh look what is this and like I, I just don't think that his type of show you know will play well potentially in the halftime show just because you know he he needs the he needs the time he needs the the extra hour to really you know he, he's he's a performer he's not just a right. performance kind of guy that's exactly right. Um, so we'll, we're we're excited to to follow the updates and see what happens there, um, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then last thing on the docket, Patrick, we got we got NASCAR preview. Now we're at Watkins excited, Glen this week. This is a big cutoff. No week, not cutoff week. Next week's cutoff. Mm-hmm. This is the last week, pretty much, other than the next week <laughs> to make it to yeah. the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And and I'll tell you what, there's there's some drivers there that that need to win. And with last week's winner being, uh, I believe, it was Michael McDowell. You're right. That kind of threw a wrench in everything. You're right, uh, Josh. I'm taking a guy this week. It's Watkins Glen. It's back to back road course races. It's it's a guy that I'm I'm putting trust in. It's a long shot to win, but it's a guy that can get it done because he has road course experience. Josh. I don't think you're ready for this. I don't know if I'm, I am. I'm going with the number 14 car, Chase Briscoe. I think wow. he gets it done this week, locks himself into the playoffs. They've had a really terrible year, but this could turn it around. Man, that's a that's a big that's a big pick. I, I I just don't know if that's that's the guy I'm going with. Now, initially, I think that if I had a had to say, Chase Elliott will definitely have a very good chance of winning this race. Pretty He's good up. at road courses. He needs to win now more than ever. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a chance that we'll see him. But I'm going with a guy that, um, I mean, he might get hot here, going on a historic run into the playoffs. If going with Kyle Larson, I think he'll do great. Um, and so, and so that's the show. Make sure you guys, uh, first of all, like, comment, subscribe, and before you stop watching, DM us at Picks and Pancakes on Instagram, and we will give you a free mug. And also a ten dollar McDonald's gift card, and so uh, you're gonna want that. You're really gonna want that. You know, mm-hmm. it could be a perfect like you know pick up pick up a couple cheeseburgers um, before the first week of the season, right? You know? and that's you get that on the Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. It's a great, a great, yeah, great little celebration there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, and then also, um, we uh. Oh, wait, what, uh, what's the other thing I usually say? Oh, go to the website, epicsandpancakes.com. <laughs> read everything happening in sports. Right. And then uh, then I think that's usually it. Listen, guys, uh, thank you for bearing with us. This is the first episode back to the virtual format. We had some, you know, we're going to have to get the kinks out. Yeah. And uh, and the setup's going to be different. Right now, the studio's still kind of in construction slash being worked on. So <laughs> I'm just, I might, I might be place to place. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Could be. <laughs> but, uh, but we appreciate you watching along. And we'll see you guys on Monday for another episode of Josh and Pat. Peace.